So why do some people still struggle to see gaming as a more mainstream part of our culture? With me now are Matt Littler and Darren Jeffries, once known as Max and OB on Hollyoaks, but now they run their own online gaming channel. And it's great to have you here, fellas, and you, because you were up late, weren't you? We were up very Hi. late, yeah. Well, we hosted the uh, Day Zero launch uh, for game, the, uh, the online re the up retailer, and uh, it was a, a great night. But you didn't get your hands on Call of Duty. No, we didn't have time. We, we, it yet. No. we were tired. I mean, we, we, I think we finished at 1 a.m. Um, and a lot of people who came down actually went home to play the game. Of course they did. Uh, maybe pulled a sickie, I'm not too sure. I'm not saying anything. Not condoning that kind of behaviour. One guy had been up 38 hours and then went home and played it after he'd been away. He said he was playing, he probably hours. just slumped on his console. I think he passed out. Yeah. The thing is, we, I mean, we, we've long since known that the gaming industry has, has overtaken Hollywood as being a much bigger industry. But do you think it still struggles with the mainstream? I don't think so, no. I think there's a small handful of people that maybe aren't into playing video games and maybe never will be. Uh, I think you're always going to have people that don't subscribe to a certain form of entertainment. But um, as we said in the in the in the VT, the industry is huge, and I think it it's by far now uh, the largest form of entertainment. And also, it's not just teenage boys that are playing video games; it's everybody. The thing is, Matt, when you see that some of the titles, I mean, look at here. You know, it's it's kind of violent. I mean, and I speak as someone who's played video games in the past. I'm not you know not completely agnostic about it, but you know, they're quite violent. They're based largely on movies of space and you know, shoot 'em ups and the rest of it. It's, it is kind of blokey. You can't really deny that, can you, these big titles? The, some of the big titles are kind of blokey. Some of the other big titles uh, appeal to, to other people as well. I mean, you, you know, you, one of the biggest titles is FIFA. You know, that, that, a lot of girls play football, a lot of girls watch football. So, you know, that, that, that appeals to both sides. It's a big franchise. It, it does what it does very well and it's going to keep coming back year after year after year. Is there is there genuine innovation now? Because, you know, a couple of years ago when the Wii came out and then you had Xbox Connect and people waving in front of their TVs and often breaking them by throwing their controllers at the <laughs> screen. It, it, that seems to have come to a bit of a, a, a standstill. Where's the real innovation now? Innovations in things like Oculus Rift, which has just been bought by Facebook, which I think is, is quite telling. Uh, and it's a virtual reality system uh, instead of the, you know, the, the virtual reality of the 80s, which was the, the line wireframe drawings. This is full stereoscopic 3D so It's like binoculars you effectively put over your head. Kind of just replaces your human eyes with video game eyes and your head is tracked and in relation to what's going on around you. Whatever you look at, you can almost physically interact with. There's also the indie game scene, uh, which is basically many small development companies making small small games, but they're extremely creative and have, have really sort of novel, original ideas behind them. And um, those games are available on, on PC, iPad, uh, Mac. Yep. And uh, that's another sort of facet, I guess, to the video game industry. It's not just these big sort of Hollywood style blockbusters. Which you need to buy an expensive machine by and large to play. And Grand Theft Auto 5, we know, is coming out for the, the big consoles and the Xbox One and, and the PS4 later in the month. But do you think that's where the future is, on people playing and grabbing a, a game for five or ten minutes on their phone when they should be working or on their iPad or whatever? I don't know. It's, it's quite telling that the, the, the consoles and your Xbox and your PlayStation are now fostering that indie talent and pushing it forward. Games like, like Gang Beasts and people like that, you know, these, these Gang smaller... Gang Beasts. Noting these down, I'm going to play Gang Beasts is like Jelly Baby Wrestling. It's okay. a lot of fun to watch and Great it's a lot fun. of fun to play. And it's these sorts of games that um, are being fostered, as I said, by the uh, the larger companies. And it, it's, it's, it's coming and it's coming up the mainstream now. It's yeah. taking over. There's room for all types of games within okay. the industry. Do you like puzzles? Yes. Okay, got, got one for you. There's a lead character, married, two children, good job, heading towards middle age, feels younger. How can he sneak a new console and a few games into the house and then find the time to play them? Sell it as a multimedia experience that yes. you can watch your TV through it. It's going to consolidate. All your, uh, all your movies, Research. all your music. My wife sat at home now going, yep, I've heard that sentence before. <laughs> that is how it works. I have learned from the games master. Thank you both very much indeed. Good to see you.